Hello, today we're going to do a little bit on deflocculation of glazes and how they hard pan. So uh, first let me show you the recipes that it will happen in and let me show you a symptomatic way to find it. So see here how this glaze is marbling in there. When you stir it like that, you see how those marbles uh, of, come up? That is an indication that it's deflocculated. Here is another indication that it's deflocculated when it hard pans in the bottom like this and won't come out. Okay, let me just show you now reasons how you would know that a glaze would deflocculate. This is a glaze called yellow salt and it has 72% nephsi and under 4 or under 5% clay. So it's got soluble sodium in the nephsi and it's got low clay. And here's a cone 6 recipe <clears throat> which is just that yellow salt recipe with frit. But it's also low clay, high nephsi. So anytime you see that, you're going to probably have to add uh, betonite and Epsom salts. So here's this, the way to do it. The first thing you're going to do if you glaze hard pans is you're going to remix it. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Then you're going to add 2 to 4 percent betonite, stir it up. If that doesn't correct the problem, you're going to add a little bit of Epsom salts. And if you still have a problem, you may add CMC. But that uh, causes other problems, which I will show you, like it keeps the glaze wet longer. And sometimes if you're dipping, that's not a good thing. Okay, so what I did was I poured the water out of this hard pan uh, glaze. Uh, and then I'm cutting this out with a loop tool. So it's very hard to get out with just a spin, uh, like, a, like a blender. But if you... If you do this, it'll come out better, hopefully. Okay. Now I'm going to show you another quality of this material. It's, th it's called Thixotropic. So do you see how ha hard and crunchy this is? But then if you, if you vibrate it like this, it's called shear stress. It will start it to move and it'll turn into a fluid. So see, that is a characteristic of this uh, material. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, and I'm going to, uh, that's in here now. I'm going to blend this up. Once I get all those pieces, I'll just put them in the water like this. Once they're moving, they will easily reconstitute. Now what I've got over here is the bentonite, and instead of doing it dry, I usually mix it up two tablespoons in a cup of water and I just let it sit there overnight or for a long time and then I can just take a scoop out. Same things with my Epsom salts. I have two tablespoons in a cup of water and the same thing with my CMC. Okay, so now what I'll do to fix this, I'm going to, like I said, the first thing you're going to do is add bentonite. So I would just add some bentonite like this. Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. If you dip and you see it dripping like this, that's an indication of a deflocculated slip. Let me see if I can dip this before I put the bentonite in. But you can see the way it see the way it dries. It's drying real quickly and leaving hanging drips. That's an indication that it's deflocculated. Okay, so now I'm gonna stir this up. That may be enough. I may do a little more just so that it, we can see it here real quick. And see, when you have it all thickened up like that, or this bentonite, it's easier to um, not to to wet in the in the glaze. If you had a dry mix, it has problems. Now that applied better. But it's not that good yet. So what I'm going to do then, is I'm going to take a few drops of this. I don't know if you can see here, but it, when I drop it in, it puffs up. That's, an, uh, that's showing you that it's changing the particle alignment. or the, it's Really what is changing is the, the pH of the water and allows the particles to flock together. So now when I dip it, see how it goes on. It's very thick and fat. Okay? 
So that is one way. And then the last way would be for me to take some of this CMC and add it. And that's another way to make a glaze uh, easy to apply. And, but I'm going to show you what happens with this. I've already added it to this. And now, you can see it doesn't dry the same way as a deflocculated one. It's, hang, it's still hanging, but not in the same way. And look how long it's taking to dry. So that is sometimes the problem with adding CMC is that you will put it on your pot and then you go like this and then it all starts to run off because it holds the wetness. So that's better if you're doing brushing. It's, then you can brush it on pretty easily. It's a smooth way to go. Uh, but if you're dipping, it can cause sheeting of the glaze. Okay, I hope that was clear and uh, we will see you next time.